I have 15 advanced words here that educated English speakers use. If you know at least 12 of them, your English is excellent. Now, I've taught English for 20 years to thousands of people, and it doesn't happen often, but when my students use these words to me, I am blown away. So, so impressed. So we're going to start quite easy and then get more and more advanced. And between you and me, some native speakers don't even know the last two. Okay, let's start. And when you've finished, write the number of words you knew in the comments. I can't reply to every message, but I will definitely look to see how many words you know. So, number one is skeptical. Skeptical. For example, she was skeptical about the weight loss program. Now, skeptical describes having doubts or not being sure about something, not being convinced that something is true or correct. For example, my friend was skeptical, not sure, not convinced, had his doubts. He was skeptical when he first heard about the benefits of meditation, but now he does it every day. The second word is feasible. Feasible. Now, an example of this Teaching online classes to students in Australia wasn't feasible because of the time difference. Feasible. This means that something is possible and practical to achieve. For example, I'm not sure it's feasible to take the two kids to different schools when they both start at nine o'clock in the morning. It's not possible, it's not practical. I can't take one and then the other if they have to be there at exactly the same time. It's just not feasible. Now, when I was planning this video, there were just too many words that I wanted to include. So, in this video, we're going to look at 15 words and then there's another 15 in a free PDF that I've made for you. You'll see all the examples and explanations of this lesson and the new 15 words in that PDF. So to get the PDF, just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you via email. The third word is avid, avid. For example, she is an avid reader and buys a new book every week, avid describes someone who has a very strong interest or enthusiasm for something. For example, I am an avid football fan and I watch every Liverpool game on TV. Number four is apprehensive. Apprehensive. Now, he felt apprehensive about starting his new job in a different city. Any ideas? Well, apprehensive means feeling anxious or a bit fearful about something that might happen. Usually a big thing, like your first day at school, moving to a city, first day at a new job. For example, I was apprehensive about publishing my first YouTube video but I'm glad I did it, okay? I was a little bit anxious, a little bit fearful, a little bit nervous, because a big thing was gonna happen, and I felt apprehensive. The fifth word is oblivious, starting with the uh, uh, uh sound, oblivious. She was so absorbed in her book that she was oblivious to the chaos around her. Oblivious means being unaware or unconscious of what is happening around you. You just, you have no idea what is happening because you are so focused on a particular thing or a particular thought. Sometimes I take my laptop to a cafe and I work there in the mornings. And when I do that, I become oblivious to everything around me. I'm just focused on my work. 
The next one is a lovely word, flabbergasted. What a great word this is, flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted by what I saw when I opened the door. Flabbergasted describes being extremely shocked or astonished. Absolutely shocked. Okay, I mean, this can be a good way or a bad way. For example, I was flabbergasted when I heard racist chant at a football match many years ago, but I was, wow, absolutely shocked. I was flabbergasted. Not in a good way, obviously. The next one is another lovely word, tomfoolery. 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 The children's tomfoolery during the party caused quite a mess. Tomfoolery refers to foolish or silly behaviour. Okay, not naughty, just silly. I've had enough of your tomfoolery. Yeah, a typical thing you might say to the kids. I've had enough of your tomfoolery. Stop it right now. Okay, how about this one? Do you know this one? Gumption. Gumption. Her gumption led her to start her own business, despite the risks. Gumption. My mother always used to say to me, come on, use your gumption. Gumption refers to initiative, or we could say common sense, or courage to take on challenges. For example, it took a lot of gumption to move to Spain and start a business here. Oh, I don't know, when I was a kid and I said to my mother, I don't know, where's the bread? She'd say, well, use your gumption. Where do you think it is? <laughs> it's in the kitchen, in the bread drawer. Okay, another nice word here. Baffle. Baffle. The complex instructions completely baffled the new employees. It's a verb, to baffle, and you often feel baffled. And it means to feel totally confused or to totally confuse someone. The rules of chess can sometimes baffle those who are new to the game. How do they feel? They feel baffled when they play. Okay, number 10 is reluctant. Reluctant. She was reluctant to accept the promotion because it required relocating, like moving to a different city. Reluctant describes a feeling of unwillingness or hesitation to do something. Okay, you're not sure about doing it. You don't really want to do it. You might do it in the end, but you are reluctant to do it. You don't really want to do it. I was reluctant to stop teaching private lessons when my first daughter was born, but I did, and it was the best decision for my family. All right, number 11, fathom. Fathom, we often use this in a negative sentence, like I can't fathom, I don't fathom, or it's hard to fathom. It's hard to fathom the impact of such a significant decision. Fathom means to understand something deeply, to comprehend something. Like I find it hard to fathom how AI has changed the way we work. In other words, I find it hard to really deeply understand and comprehend just how much artificial intelligence has changed the world so quickly. Okay, another nice word is dwindle. Dwindle. I've chosen these advanced words, but a lot of them are actually very nice to say as well. Dwindle. So, dwindle. As the night went on, the number of wedding guests began to dwindle. As the night went on, the number of wedding guests began to dwindle. To dwindle means to diminish gradually, okay, to get smaller in number or in strength as well. So another example is my energy can dwindle by the end of a long day making videos or working in general. My energy can 
dwindle, gradually get lower and lower and lower. Okay, how are you doing so far? Number 13 is nonchalant. Nonchalant. For example, she walked into the meeting 15 minutes late and she was quite nonchalant about it as if it was completely normal. Nonchalant describes someone who is unconcerned, unworried, indifferent, calm, relaxed about a situation where others really would expect them to have a stronger emotional reaction. It's quite a negative thing normally, like how can you be so calm? You should be reacting about this. Stop being so calm and relaxed about this situation. Another example, the football team lost the match, but the coach was nonchalant about it, saying he was just focused on the next game. Okay, fair enough, but if your football team loses, you want to see a little bit of disappointment, sadness, anger in the manager, right? Not just, bah, it's fine, the next game's gonna be better. Come on, man, care a bit more, you know? Stop being so nonchalant. Okay, number 14 is pertinent. Pertinent. Notice the er uh sound at the beginning. Er, uh, per, pertinent, pertinent. For example, she asked several pertinent questions during the meeting. Well, pertinent means relevant or directly applicable or important to a very particular situation or a particular matter. For example, I always include pertinent cultural references from English culture in my courses to engage my students. Okay, pertinent, directly related to a particular matter. And the last one is ascertain. It looks like certain at the end, but the pronunciation is tain at the end, ascertain. For example, we need to ascertain the cause of the problem before proceeding. Ascertain. So to ascertain means to find out or determine something with certainty. So the word certain is part of the word and it means to find out something for certain. The only thing is, as I said before, that the pronunciation of certain becomes certain. Ascertain. For example, I needed to ascertain the best software to use for my interactive online courses. And it's quite a formal word, but it's one that is used regularly by educated English speakers. Now listen carefully to these three things. Number one, how many words did you know? Just put your number in the comments. Bam, bam. I would love to see how many you knew. Number two, remember to get the PDF for a review of these words and examples and explanations and 15 more advanced words, which if you know, your English is excellent. And finally, if you're still here, you probably enjoy learning English with me. And if that's the case, I think you would really enjoy one of my courses to help take your English to an advanced level. I've got courses for B2, Upper Intermediate, and C1, Advanced Learners, and there are links in the description to those courses. And if you're not sure what your level is, then watch that video to find out. Bye for now.